So I had ordered the bumper uh, from Southern Style, and uh, the first thing I'm going to say is I ordered the low profile with a 20 inch cutout um, and the worn uh, xenon uh, wench. Uh, and it took about, I want to say, 12 weeks. It was like almost three months for the bumper to get here. I got the wench and the light bar um, before I got the bumper. And then um, once I got the bumper, I got everything out, watched a couple of YouTube videos, which I will link to in the description here, because I'm really not going to cover the, you know, taking off your bumper, putting the new bumper on and installing everything. There's a lot of good videos already out there for it. Um, so I'll link to those, but I do want to cover a couple points that I think might help you if you have the 2021 Venture Edition 4Runner. So I had watched um, Wonderlost, um, uh, their video, which is really uh, good, but they didn't cover a couple things. One is their uh, Venture or their uh, 4Runner doesn't have the TSS um, system, mine did. Uh, so that caused a bit of a kerfuffle and of course now my uh, 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 proximity sensor or the, the sensor before you get in an accident, it warns you to break, um, is not working. And I think I might've actually broke the bracket. So there is a bracket um, that you'll need to take off. Um, and one of the videos I'm gonna link to shows how to do that before you pull the front bumper off. Additionally, it looks like they changed the wiring. Um, so I, I had to get uh, for the fog lights, wiring for the fog lights. So I had to order some tape so I could secure the um, uh, fog light wiring down um, in the new bumper. And then lastly, um, which I think is most important, which I had no idea until I went online and read the forums, is there is no good way to access the clutch um, spooling lever or the connector for the um, controller uh, through the front of the car um, with this hidden winch. You actually have to do it from the top. So I'm gonna try to come up with some innovative, innovative solution um, for that. Uh, because it's just a pain in the butt and I don't, really don't want to lose the plastic piece so I'll have another video to come on on at least how I've addressed that problem you read in the forums there's you know a thousand and one opinions on it but it, it is just kind of a, a funky um, approach to attach the, curl, uh, the controller or, or do the spooler additionally um, with the light bar the wiring harness does not come with the bumper kit. So you will need to, um, in, unless you wanna make your own wiring harness, you will need to order the Baja um, light bar wiring harness so you can actually um, wire it in and a control switch. So I'll have another video um, on that part as well. All right, and just a couple more things. When you're installing the winch, be sure you hook up the black ground cable to the winch, fully install it on the bumper, make sure it's all locked down and then install it on the vehicle. Um, you can leave that front grill cover off until everything's fully installed and then install it um, on the truck. There's nothing blocking it. Um, I already mentioned the TSS cable, so be very careful with that. And there are two radiator scoops um, under the hood and the Wanderlust, they're like, oh, just chuck them out. I believe the engineers designed them for a reason and actually in the Southern Style um, install Vizio, all they do is just showing um, cutting them so you can just cut it so it fits and they stay in there. So hopefully you'll have as much luck as I did getting it installed. Um, it is pretty straightforward and now let's get on to getting it tested out on the trail. Okay, so what do we got? We got toilet paper, clothes, dog stuff, cooler, pillow. <laughs> it's your personal preference. Backup water and then all the camping gear. Um, and the uh, pink sleeping pad. And that's it. So let's hit the road. All right. So for this overnight trip, I wanted to go down to June Lake. I hadn't been there. <clears throat> and um, uh, there looked like there was some off-road availability. And June Lake is outside of Mono Lake. So that's what you're looking at here. There's Mono Lake. And if I can zoom in a little bit, you're gonna see um, the road and it's really called the June Lake Loop. That's Grants Lake um, coming down. 
and then um, I've got some, I did some off-roading around the lake, and then uh, Silver Lake, where I camped at the Silver Lake Campground, Gull Lake, and then June Lake. And this area is the high desert, it's about 6,000, 7,000 feet, at least where I was at. And when you look on <clears throat> Google Earth, you can see um, the off-road tracks coming through. And, you know, there were regular cars down here, so you didn't really need anything too technical. But I came down and went up um, to Walker Lake, and you'll see some video of that. And then um, went around and down, and you can see um, uh, there's Parker Lake. So you can drive up to the Parker Lake um, trailhead. Uh, that's the June, uh, sorry, the Walker Lake trail is being highlighted. And then you can come around um, to the Parker Lake um, trailhead which is which is and it's really beautiful back there and the nice thing about um, being able to confidently go down these roads is you, is you see part of the country that you wouldn't see from from the main highways and then there's one section of the road that kind of comes off here um, that's just a little bit more technical I wouldn't recommend you know just taking a, a street legal um, type vehicle now what you're seeing right there is the Parker Lake trailhead and then that other trail that's going up to the north is the Parker Lake Creek Trail. And then this is a trail that you'll see in the video that I was like, hey, and the trail goes on down a ways. And it does. Um, this I'll save for, for another trip um, because the coming up into it, it's pretty technical. I got, not technical, I mean, there's a couple ruts and a few big rocks, um, but there is some interesting um, geology out here uh, to see. And you can kind of see that the road, I mean, it goes on quite a ways. Now, I don't know how much of this you can wheel. Maybe you can only um, take it by dirt bike or um, four by uh, four by four or four by or f whatever those razors are called. You can take those, um, but I'll save that for another, another trip. And you can see um, there is a lot of um, kind of cool stuff. And I was actually able um, where the little hand is now, you can actually drive down into the lake, the lake bed and like park right on the lake. There are tons of people out there camping with RVs. Um, so it's totally doable even for like a street legal car. And then you can also take this loop around the backside of the lake. And I got about here and then, and then turned around because it was getting late. But there, I did see cars parked on the other side of the lake as well. And then um, I went out to Mono Lake and there's all these little roads that you can take. And if you're into rock hounding and things like that, um, there's a lot of cool, cool things to see out there as well. And then of course the last part of the trip, at least the coming home part, um, 108 is like my favorite place to not only motorcycle ride, but to camp. Um, it's like, I call it the poor man's Yosemite. It's just one of my favorite places to go. It's really picturesque and there's just a lot of off-road opportunities out there, um, off-road motorbiking and um, four by fouring. It's a little bit more technical than being out in the desert, but it's really beautiful. And if you're not in, into using Google Earth, you can use Google Maps and you can see those points listed out here as well. All right, so we got all that done loaded and always go out with a full tank of gas and then landed um, on the June Lake Loop uh, for Mono Craters. And this is just um, a pan around at the Mono Craters um, and I'm going up the road and then the scenery around. This is um, one of the little um, uh, rest areas. Uh, there's a creek that runs all the way to Grant Lake. Lots of fishermen out there. I think they stock all those creeks with um, trout. And it, the weather was about 90 degrees. It was pretty warm. Um, and the creek water was warm as well. And here I am in the campground looking up at the ranges. And then this is um, one of the creeks uh, I stopped in and took a dip and let the dog play around. And then um, went down to Grant Lake. And again, as I said, you can drive around in the lake bed. Um, so I took the truck down there and also took the let the dog out and took a dip. And the water's actually quite warm. And where I was at, it was um, uh, not very deep. 
So I, so I think on the, the main part of the lake, you could probably take a bigger boat, but on that side of the lake, you don't want anything that's gonna have any draft to it. And then these are just some um, shots of all the um, roads going around the lake. Um, they're really well maintained. There are some places where it's rutted and gravelly, but nothing that I don't think, you know, a high clearance vehicle at 4x4 would be able to handle. And then camped out at Silver Lake Campground, which is a nice campground. Um, Watch the sun come up on the ridge. That was really beautiful. And then packed up camp and headed out um, to go explore the Walker Lake, Parker Lake areas. And now this is taking the roads um, near Grant Lake, the, the trail roads, um, and I think this one's going up to uh, Walker Lake. And one of the things on the roads, and this is kind of a dead gettable way, is if, you, if it's fully graveled, you see a lot of tracks, you know the, the road's well used. Um, if you start going down roads, uh, roads where in the center there's still grass, then you know um, you're on a trail that, that might not be used heavily. And again, all this video is um, sped up. Um, you know, I was not going this fast out there. And, and there's several reasons for that. One, um, this was a solo trip, so I was by myself with the dog. And I, I don't want to take any risks. Um, I've got really good tires. Um, the, you know, the truck's brand new and, and I've done um, basic maintenance like the oil, oil change and stuff myself. So I know that, you know, everything's running well. But I just don't want, I don't, while I have all the recovery gear, um, I don't want to have to use it, right? I don't want to get myself in situations where um, I could potentially get stuck and then um, be in an area that that I, I may not be able to, to get out of without it being a, a huge, a huge hassle. Um, so, so anyway, so, so that's the storyboard on, on that. Uh, but the one really nice thing about this is the view that you get from the main highways, right? The paved highways is a way different view that you would get when you're actually going out on these off roads. And to me, you know, taking a road I haven't been down, not knowing, you know, what I'm going to see over the next vista is really a lot of the enjoyment and, and the draw for me, right? And I'm really big on um, uh, plant life, you know, looking at the different plants and also the um, geology, right? I'm an amateur geologist. And also the history, right? The early people's history, whether it's Native American or, or earlier, right? And then also, you know, the more recent history, 1600s, 1800s, the mining history, logging history, all of that, right? So you're always on the lookout for interesting places that you can go poke around in the dirt to, to see if you can find any uh, remnants of that, whether it be an old structure, um, uh, um, stone tool making flakes, just, just any kind of that kind of history. And the, it always turns out that, that you find something of interest, right? Whether you think you found a tree blaze or an old building pad or a break, broken piece of pottery, right? In your mind, you build stories around it. And also this area around June Lake has a lot of diverse um, ecosystems, right? So you can see right here, I'm kind of, and I think these are pine trees or pinyon trees, right? Um, going through these pine forests and then you're in the scrub and then you're in the pure desert, you know, around Mono Lake. So the, the diversity of these little micro climates or micro ecosystems throughout this mountain range um, was very, very thrilling to, to be part of. Um, and as you can see, the road is actually pretty good. There's a couple places where it was a little rocky, but I saw regular, you know, um, cars go through here. So this is the Walker Lake Trailhead. And it's actually quite nice up here and cool, and there's tons of shade and camping available. So, really good place to come up and a primitive camp. I really like it. Again, I mentioned I like seeing some of the, the botany around, and this is an image of the prickly poppy, which I had no idea there was even such a thing. So where are we? 
there's there's Mono Lake. And then up over here, through here, and over here, up here is Walker Lake. Walker Lake's back here. And then the pass that they said the Miwok took over to Yosemite Valley is through that pass there. And then Parker Lake, if you look, you can just somewhere here make out the road. That's Parker Lake Creek Road. And then the road goes back up. And then Parker Lake is back here. Now the road I'm on is a little offshoot. It's not marked, but it goes, it comes up from Parker Lake Road and around and down and over. And that one I think goes quite a way. So we're gonna save that for another day, but you can see that one on Google Maps and it really goes back um, quite a way. So a good road to explore. And so far I wouldn't take like a outback down it, but yeah, if you've got something with high clearance, I think you're gonna be fine and some good tires because the soil out here is a lot of this stuff. Which is a super rocky. So you, you, I think you would like to have at least um, four wheel drive. So anyway, that's where we're at and off to the next campsite. And this is coming back down um, the road I was just on. Uh, <clears throat> and again, and you can see the little bits of grass <laughs> in between the, where the, the tracks. That just tells you it's not a main road. It's not, maybe not a heavily traveled um, uh, road. But again, the, the scenery out here, I mean, it, it was just kind of breathtaking. It's big open country, big, big sky country. Um, and I think where I was at, you're probably near seven, 8,000 feet. Um, so why the valley was in the 90s, it was in the mid 80s or low 80s up here and you actually get a pretty nice breeze. So it's really, you know, the high desert to me is just one of the best places to be. Um, and it's really fun to be able to be in a vehicle that you have a lot of confidence in um, uh, to go exploring. Um, because you're not, you know, worried about, oh, is this thing going to break on this vehicle or is that thing going to break, right? Um, you, you know, you have the tires for it, you know, you have um, clearance for at least, you know, terrain like this, you know, with some rocks and stuff. Um, and you know that if you did get in trouble, right, because I had my track boards, I had the, the winch installed, um, I have, you know, my recovery gear if I needed it, that you know, with enough ingenuity, um, you could get yourself out. So it really lets you go into these type of terrains with a, with a freer mind. So you're more about enjoying the experience um, than, you know, worried about, you know, you know, am I gonna get my Honda Accord, you know, Matt's off-road recovery um, stuck in a situation uh, where you shouldn't be. And I think for me as a beginning off-roader, right, I, you know, I off-roaded as a teenager, you know, not that I was driving, you know, I was always a passenger, right? So this is me off-roading, and especially as a female, right? I think there's just a, a different mindset maybe there for us um, uh, coming into this off-roading community. Uh, uh, so to be able to get out here and do this type of trip you know, kind of on your own, uh, again, within certain boundaries, right, is, is really, I don't want to say liberating, but I guess I am, um, because you get to experience things that you, you normally haven't. And now this is, um, after I got done exploring the June Lake Loop, you know, at least, at least what, I, what I could for that day, I went down to, to Mono Lake, and one of the things that I did get to see um, was an osprey, which you know, go figure. I'd never, I, I think I saw what I thought was ospreys, but I never uh, saw it. And then coming back home, I stopped at my favorite um, place, which is um, Stanislaus, and uh, took a took a dip in the river. Uh, enjoyed again this breathtaking scenery um, there in Stanislaus Stanislaus Forest, and got a hero shot on my dog.
So we had a great trip. Everything was still right and tight when we got back home. Uh, so look forward to our next adventure and hopefully we don't have to use any of that recovery gear. It's just there if we need it. Um, and happy trails.